So welcome to Beauty of Colors podcast, Amanda. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. So Amanda, tell the listeners about you and what incident led you to reclaiming your life. So currently I am a stay-at-home mom homeschooling three beautiful girls and I'm fortunate enough to have a loving and supportive husband. However, about 16 years ago, when I was um, in my fourth year of college, I was raped at gunpoint in the parking garage at, on the campus of the university. And where I was at specifically was on the same floor where the police officers parked their cruisers. And I was less than 50 feet away from the campus police office. And um, my rapist went on to kidnap and rape a second victim. And then he raped and murdered his last known victim and is currently sitting on death row in Nevada. And I was instrumental in leading to his arrest because I was able to give a description and sit down with a detective and help them in coming up with a composite of who my attacker was. Um, And on the outside, as I was moving forward, I was so determined to not let this define me, if that makes sense. Like I knew that being raped was a defining moment in my life, but I didn't want it to define me. I just didn't really know how to keep moving forward. And so I just kept putting one foot in front of the other. At the time of my attack, I was dating my now husband. And so we got married pretty shortly after I finished college, started making a family and everyone who was aware of my circumstances gave me accolades for being such a survivor and for moving on. And the honest truth was inside, even though outside I looked like I was doing well on the inside, I was void. And, um, I just, I reached a point where I wanted more. I was, um, you know, like I just, this life had to be, had to have more to offer than just floating through after surviving something like that. And I just didn't really know how to do that and how to start really living again, meaning how to enjoy just life, like see color, see depth, enjoy to feel feelings of joy and sadness and to not just be numb. And the Lord was just very faithful to meet me where I was at and to walk alongside me onto this journey of reclaiming my life and living an abundant life after surviving trauma. And it's given me this devotion and passion to let other people know that they too can reclaim their lives after surviving trauma. So Amanda, did you get help after that? Like, did you go to therapy? I did. I went, um, and I think it's important to say that it's not always a one size fit all. Some therapists just didn't, weren't very helpful for me. And so I had to keep searching for that right fit to, for what um, they had to offer and what I needed at the time. And it's been, it's been nothing less than a journey because there's points where I will go to therapy and do lots of, lots of couch time and talk through and different types of therapy. And I reach a point in my healing where I feel like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Like I'm in a good place now to stop. And, um, and then as more layers get peeled back through various circumstances, then I go back to therapy or I find a different provider to be able to, to discuss it with. So you talk about God and how you found peace within. Is that was that part of your therapy, or did you were you a Christian before? Or I was a Christian before, and um, it's probably understandable that my faith really struggled. I struggled a lot with my faith after surviving something that like that, and I was really really mad at God. Um, and so I've been to a variety of different therapists. I've gone to prayer-based therapy and I've gone to um, like traditional talk therapy and and stuff and I think both really have their place and um, it just really depends on what your specific need is and I, I think that in that journey God was very faithful to lead me to who I needed to be with at that time for that level of healing to be accomplished. 
So what are some of the practical applications to equip and empower people to take action in their own lives? Yeah, so the Lord has been faithful to show me that I need four pillars on a daily basis to be able to reclaim um, my life. And the first one is my backbone. And that is what is central in the core of who I am. And that for me is my faith. And so building and strengthening that with in the, being in the word, being in prayer, being in community with other believers is just so integral for me when it comes to walking that journey. The second thing, um, it kind of leads into it is my, I call it my rib cage, which if you think of the structure of the human body, the rib cage is important. It's, it's given the task of protecting all your vital organs and it is attached to your backbone. And so my rib cage is made up of a very select group of people who I let into my inner circle and I let speak into my life and into the circumstances when I'm walking through it. And then I find people as well to be a part of their rib cage. So it's an active, it's being in that, that tight knit community, which is just so, so important and having trusted individuals for that. The second or the third thing is um, my funny bone. I had to learn how to laugh again, because laughter is just such an important medicine for life. And I'm not saying that I, I don't laugh at what happened to me. But when an opportunity presents itself to laugh, I enjoy it and I take full advantage of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I had to learn not to take myself so seriously as well. And then lastly, um, I needed my wishbone. I needed to change my thinking from why me, why this to what now? What am I going to do with this now? How am I going to allow God to take these ashes and trade it for beauty? And it's, it's that what now that continues to give me resolve in the darkest moments of my healing journey. And my what now has looked different in different seasons of my life. But now my what now is helping other people to be equipped to live a full life. So what are the seven letter F words? If you can give us two of them and how does these F words help victim reclaim their lives? Yeah, that is such an important thing. That's part of like my backbone. So the seven letter F word is forgive. (laughs) And um, it's not a very, I probably don't make a lot of friends in saying this, but, or it's not very popular. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest components for my healing journey has been forgiving the man who raped me. And I think a lot of times that forgiveness is confused with allowance and saying that what you did was okay. And it, it's not so much about that. It's it's more about releasing the control and power that someone has over you and saying, you know what? And, and for me, a lot of my faith, it, it was rooted in that because Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I had to accept that the cross was big enough to absorb the sins that had been committed against me as well. And so I can lay those offenses down. I can lay just the egregious, heinous acts that have been done against me Mm -hmm. and leave them at the foot of the cross and not carry them any longer. And that allows me to walk in freedom for what has been done to me because I know that Jesus is carrying that and that it no longer has to plague me so to speak as I walk through but it's not like a one and done thing there's such a process when it comes to forgiveness too and it's it's you know it's it is nothing less than a journey as well just like reclaiming your life is have you thought of writing a book I have written a book actually okay okay (laughs) um I it's going to actually be released next Tuesday on Amazon. It's called Beyond Survival, Reclaiming My Life After I Survived Rape. Okay. And so people will be able to find it on Amazon. It'll be um, the the digital download will be available on November 14th. And then on November 28th, people will be able to order a hard copy for themselves. 
Wow, great. Okay. I thought about it. I'm like, does she have a book or not? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was um it was a long time coming. It it had been on my heart for a long time to write it. And over the last three years I've worked tirelessly at it. And so I'm finally able to 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 send the message that God has given me out to the world. And I pray that a lot of people find freedom and healing in it and that loved ones who were coming alongside survivors feel better equipped to know how to effectively and lovingly walk alongside that journey within like the rib cage of of their people so how can the listeners get in touch with you do you have seminars do you have speaking engagements and um, what is your website um my website is www.amandacollinsjohnson.com and um my instagram is tears speak 07 same as my facebook tears stands for teaching and empowering assault rape survivors it's a nonprofit that i'm um, launching up off the ground and i do do lots of speaking engagements when i'm invited i do my best to go wherever i'm invited and so if any of the listeners are interested in having me as a speaker i would love to have the opportunity to serve the community that they're in and um yeah my website has my email and um and then you can on the social media platforms as well now this question i'm going to ask you is i don't know if you're prepared to answer it but okay. if you, if you were to meet your rapist right now what would you say mm-hmm. to him and you said that you have forgiven him but if you do meet him face to face what would you say to him um i would say to him so in my impact statement during after the trial, I I was able to look at him and tell him that I forgave him, but I still did ask the court that he received the penalty to the fullest extent of the law. And if I was to meet him now, I would say the same thing. I would say, I forgive you and that um, this is not what God had intended for you when he laid the foundation of the earth. These are not the choices that God desires for you. And um, as hard as it is for me and as unnatural as it is for me to, to say it, I would let him know that if he accepted the Lord into his heart and truly, truly put his trust in Jesus and what was accomplished for him on the cross, that he would have redemption in in the next life um and again like i it's really hard for me to wrap my mind around that but i also have to humble myself and acknowledge that my sins also are what held jesus to the cross that night that he was betrayed as well and and if jesus can like it's just not up to me it's really up to the lord and what his what my rapist's heart where it's at So do you have any last words for the listeners on sharing their stories to help empower others? Um, I would just say, just find your what now, wherever you're at, wrestle with your what now. It doesn't have to be big and monumental. It's okay if your what now is getting up out of bed and moving to the couch, because some days that is a big feat and, and that is okay. And celebrate your small victories and accomplishments and just give yourself the the freedom and the grace to to make small incremental steps it's not an overnight it's not an overnight instantaneous transformation but it it is possible to obtain and get there okay amanda well thank you so much for being on beauty of colors podcast thank you so much for having me again